This video wouldn't have been possible without the generous help of my friend Gimpy, who reviewed the script. Thank you. I downloaded this game, and I'm not joking when I say this, but I downloaded this game solely because I saw a YouTube ad for it which contained an honest-to-God waifu montage. Why did I think a game advertised with a waifu montage would be a good game? Why did I think it would be a good idea to download a game which is built around gambling for JPEGs? Why, when I saw that the game's publisher was doing possibly illegal shit, did I not just immediately uninstall it? I understand this is a genre many enjoy, but it's about as far from my cup of tea as possible. I mean, shit, I can't even drink to make this any easier. I had to suffer through this glorious dumpster fire of a game sober. This is just not worth the $3 of AdSense revenue I'm gonna make. My problems with this game have nothing to do with the revealing art. While it's not exactly my cup of tea, I can't place American standards on a foreign product, especially not one made all the way on the other side of the world in Hong Kong. If you didn't know, Hong Kong, or rather China, is pretty fucking different from the US. I understand that this is pretty standard stuff, and I understand why games like this get made. There's an audience for this kind of thing, and they're simply catering to it. I mean, hell, there's entire YouTube channels that exist just to re-upload others' music with anime girls on the thumbnail and they get an absolute shit ton of views. I can't objectively review this game and bitch about the art. That's hypocritical, and regardless, I don't particularly care. But it doesn't even matter, because this game fucks up so bad everywhere else that there is plenty for me to objectively criticize. From the genuinely horrendous English translation and mind-numbing gameplay, to the disastrous launch and eventually to the incentivizing of their player base to increase the game's rating, Super Prism has failed to make a game about gambling for fucking JPEGs. How you fuck that up is beyond me. So, while this video says review, it's not gonna be a very in-depth one, and I'm gonna start it by telling you that the game sucks. That's not even a question. This video is more like a combination of an analysis of why it sucks, me taking the piss out of the game, and documenting some incredibly scummy business practices. Without further ado, let the forced me telling you to subscribe bit right before the actual content begin. Hey babes! Mommy? Don't you think it'd be like totally tubular if everyone watching this really just smash that like button and totally subscribe to the channel? Oh yeah, but if I'm getting that in, I'm gonna stop cheating on Now, I know I'm supposed to save exposing the ethically wrong and possibly illegal stuff for the end of the video so I can accumulate more watch time, but that's fucking stupid. We only have so much time in our lives and there's no reason for me to waste yours. So, let's get all the scummy shit out of the way so afterwards we can just focus on the game. Just so you know, I'm basing everything I say here off of this Reddit thread because I don't personally know a lot about gacha games. Additionally, I'm not directly saying that what this game is doing is illegal because I didn't talk to a lawyer and I don't want to get sued for slander. However, you're an independent thinker? Think critically about what I'm saying, and I'm sure you'll draw your own conclusions. Essentially, Super Prism is being accused of both buying 5-star reviews and of incentivizing their player base to give them 5-star reviews. Actually, they aren't being accused of doing this, they are 100% proven to have done this. At least with the latter claim, there was a literal public Discord announcement that if the game's rating went up, players would get in-game currency that allows them to roll for characters. Unfortunately, they removed this announcement from their Discord, but they reference inconsiderate events in their apology post, which I'm gonna take as confirmation that this screenshot isn't fake. Now, putting aside the fact that the amount of currency they offer is practically nothing and that the units you can currently get with this currency will most likely eventually become obsolete, this is a clear breach of the Google Play Store Terms of Service, and is at the very least ethically wrong and at the most constitutes as paid or fake testimonials, which is definitely illegal and could cost them quite a lot of money. On top of this, Super Prism rolled back the NA server to practically launch time 17 hours after the game's launch, resetting the accounts of everyone who had spent money, and as far as I can tell haven't offered refunds, which, uh, that's not good. They've also made an additional plethora of bad and shady decisions when it comes to the game's design and the gotcha rates, but I don't know enough to explain this part, so either look at these screenshots or check the description where I've compiled everything others have found in one handy document. So essentially, everything surrounding the game is an absolute disaster. The Discord server has just become a giant meme, and the second I joined, a bunch of people started covertly shitting on Super Prism, which then turned into just flat-out shitting on Super Prism. So everybody 
everybody's either mad or is taking the piss out of the company, which I think is fair so long as they aren't shitting on the probably overworked dev team. Super Prism have done some questionable things that warrant a pissed off reaction, but some people just don't care. No, in fact, there are quite a few people that say the game itself is good, and there's one YouTube video that reaches so far to defend Super Prism that I genuinely think it's a troll. Now, people are allowed to like the game, although later on in this video I'll be showing you that these people are likely clinically insane as this game is fucking awful, but, and you can skip this if you're uninterested, I want to take a sec to respond to this YouTube video because it really is quite egregious. Before I start respectfully critiquing this person's opinion, I need to remind you not to go over and start shitting on them. The keyword I'm using is respectfully. I may think some awful things in my head, but I'm not going to say them, and you shouldn't either. While I'm more than happy to insult a company that couldn't give two shits about me, I'm not going to attack or demean a single individual because that's just bullying. Don't be a bully. Anyways, we're gonna go through the video clip by clip and I'll respond to it as we go along. Let's get rolling. There's been some conversations going around about Super Prism hiding their name or there's some, some, some things going on with like the, oh, it's the production, it's not the dev team. Guys, you need to chill. You need to understand that first and foremost, these are established companies and businesses that you guys do not understand. Okay, so first of all, you didn't even address the claim that Super Prism was hiding their name. You just completely deflected that point. And also, while yeah, we don't know the inner workings of their company, we're not completely fucking stupid and the decisions they make are still made by humans. Probably. We can look at a decision a company has made, in this case that would be hiding their name, which I'm gonna just assume is something they did actually do because you didn't refute it, and we can very easily tell that that's not a very ethical thing to do. That's lying. Lying is bad. We learned this when we were little kids, and there's no way a company can justify lying, especially not if they're profiting from it. You should know how hard it is to coordinate, especially when you're dealing with multiple regions. So is the point you're making that it's so hard to coordinate from China to the US that somehow between the two they messed up the company's name? I mean, I know that China and the US hate each other, but I'd imagine it's pretty damn hard to mess up something as simple as the company's name. There definitely can be issues with coordination, and I'd accept that as a valid reason for why the servers were so bad on launch day, but you can't just say coordination is hard and then walk away like that explains or justifies any Anything. It certainly doesn't explain how they screwed up the literal company's name. I'm not gonna go into a game and shit on it. That is disrespectful. That's the mo mob mentality of let's gang up on the reviews and give them all a one star review. Super Prism's being disrespectful to the player by attempting to bribe them with a pathetic reward in order to increase their rating. Respect is a two way street, and from what I've seen, Super Prism isn't all too deserving of respect. And regardless, a product can be criticized independently from its quality. That's how people improve. The team behind it decided let's have an event. You guys, if you're liking the game, give us a five star review. View. And if we reach a certain amount, let's go ahead and give the whole community a, a bonus, a, a, a present, right? You did not have to participate in that event. <sighs> this is the exact same argument I see come up with Battlefront 2 and loot boxes. Oh, EA isn't forcing you to buy loot boxes. No, they're not literally coming to your home and forcing you to buy them. But people who are into gotcha have a legitimate disease and addiction. In gotcha, you're almost required to gamble. Gambling is an addiction, and if you provide people with an easy way to get their fix, of course they're going to take it. Okay, I shouldn't make blanket statements. Not every gotcha gamer is addicted to gambling, and it is partially on them to have that self-control, but you can't deny that gacha games are nearly always built around this gambling aspect, and it's a great place for gambling addictions to arise. Did you know that if you falsely review companies, you can lose access to being able to review companies. While maybe there were a lot of troll reviews, most of the ones I saw weren't actually false. They had reasoning behind them, actual proof in fact, and regardless, this again goes both ways. If you offer a reward in exchange for a good review, people will be dishonest in that review because they want to get that reward, which means that everyone participating in this event is being just as bad as these so-called troll reviewers. And yes, they're allowed to ask you to review. Read the fucking terms, guys. Yes, they can ask you for a review. No, they cannot offer you an incentive to give that review. Look, it's right here. I found this in 10 seconds. I got people who are in the Discord, the official, an official Discord for a company. We're talking a company that makes more money than your bloodline. 
and you're gonna go in there and you're gonna go telling people game is trash game is dead don't play this game it's shit dead they're dead 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 if i'm hearing this right you're saying we can't critique a company because they make a lot of money what if you're a new player and you're trashing the game why can't you just move on why can't you just not play the game move on go play pokemon go go play candy crush those might be more in line with the your mentality <laughs> Good. You heard it here, folks. If you don't like a game, just shut the fuck up and go play Candy Crush. I do agree that kids shouldn't play gotcha games. They're heavily focused on gambling, which kids don't know how to handle. But what you're saying here isn't even anything. Candy Crush's main audience is, uh, let me see here, 42% people between 21 to 35 and 40% people above 30. So you've literally just negated your own point. I will say, reviewing a game based on your first impressions isn't always the right call, but it has its place and its importance, and you can't just tell people to shut up. When you're playing a game from an established company such as Super Prism, and you have all this quality work put in, the hours, the days, the years put into developing a game to be able to not only get approved by Apple, you know you have to get a license to make apps, right? But then they have great, features, excellent gameplay, well-designed characters, high caliber CV. I mean, this company has put in a lot of money to this game. You're gonna come in and just shit on it? Yes! Yes, I am. The game fucking sucks. It doesn't matter how much time, effort, or money they put into it. I spend a ton of time researching, writing, and editing my videos, but if at the end of the day I make a garbage video, then it's going to do bad and I'm going to get shit on for it. People only care about the product. That's just how the world works. Anyways, that's actually a great transition into my actual review. The rest of her video is kind of redundant. It's mostly just her coming up with creative insults and comments somehow and calling us racist. racist what? So, uh... Yeah. On to... As I've said before, I don't give a shit about gambling for rare waifu JPEGs. I'm not the kind of person who would easily get addicted to this kind of game, but I can still understand how it works. So, since I'm not well versed in the gacha aspect, I'm gonna leave reviewing that particular system to the people I've already mentioned in the document in the description, and instead I'll review how well the game's story and gameplay incentivizes the use of that gacha system, as that is the game's ultimate goal. Let's start with the story, which is absolutely the most laughably bad story I've ever experienced. Maybe I just don't play enough badly translated foreign games, but this is genuinely worse to me than every RPG Maker game I've ever played. I have absolutely no clue why they would give this little care to the story, as story is a great way to incentivize roles, but hey, what do I know? The story set up for King Sense is as follows. 88 years ago, a big-ass asteroid hit Earth. Everyone who survived ran away underground, and then 54 years later, a group called the PTH Group developed technology to enhance humans, which I take to mean as turning them into sexy waifu OP murderers because those are the only humans we ever see. Probably. Anyways, I'm not actually sure why we needed the murder waifus, but humans started to return to the surface and we're now in a cyberpunk future with enhanced waifus who can go Super Saiyan. I respect them trying to justify the big boobies, but this is very awful. After getting some deeply moving words of wisdom, we go watch a big tit waifu kill people. I think this is supposed to be a flashback, but all I know is big booby lady say ara ara and kill people with big sword. The amount of grammatical errors here is truly astonishing, and while it's obvious why there are so many, the devs either didn't care or wanted to take the cheaper route, this makes me want to go play other mobile games and see what their stories are like. The amount of joy I got from laughing at the horrendous translation is infinitely more of a reaction than this game would have gotten if it had good writing. Anyways, escaping the crazed sword lady who for some reason spared our life, fuck if I know why, we go and meet up with Cat Lady. This game is really covering all the bases. This is Yui, she's our superior and someone we'll be seeing quite a lot of. She asks us if we remember how to fight, and while normally this is where a game would allow you to skip the tutorial, here we're forced to do it because uh... So we enter the tutorial fight and are introduced to our two main characters, Red Boob and Yellow Boob, because neither you nor I are going to remember their names anyways. They compliment us on our ability to find a fucking street, what? And then Cat Lady gets turned into a marketable chibi. The croutons help me, I've been turned into a marketable plush, which you can now buy for $19.99 on the YouTube store. Just kidding, not yet. 
not there yet. Okay, so actually this chibi is an AI based on her appearance that teaches us the basics of combat, but that's about as stupid as what I said, so... I'll command you to my dick, baby girl. Hoo-hoo, let's get going. Finally, the combat begins, and holy shit, the tutorial is information overload. So we're about even with other mobile games. There are a ton of systems that for the entirety of my time with the campaign, I just didn't bother learning. Essentially, the combat works like this. It's turn-based, and every turn you draw skill cards equivalent to the amount of deployed characters plus one. Each of these skills is extremely flashy and over the top, and you use them with their corresponding characters in whatever order you want until everyone on your side is out of stamina. As you use skills, land critical hits, or take damage, your characters will build up royal energy until they can use their mega fuck you move. The mega fuck you moves are even flashier than the skills, and they generally instantly win you the fight, at least in PvE. There's a ton of other stuff, like elemental strengths and counterattacks if you're not within a certain range, but it's not really important. Essentially, the combat boils down to who draws the better skill cards and who has the better characters. It's like watching a budget anime fight scene, but who wins is determined by luck and who pays more money. Or at least, that's what they wish it was like. In practice, you can just set your team to auto-fight during PvP, and then it doesn't really matter. I actually tested this. I played through the campaign somewhat seriously for the first chapter, but for the second I skipped all the dialogue and just did the combat. I had the game on autoplay, and I never once leveled up my characters. I was able to beat the entirety of Chapter 2 without even hardly looking at my screen. After you beat Chapter 2, you unlock PvP, and this is where my brain just fucking gives up and dies. PvP is forced auto-battle. There is no way to directly control your characters. This makes spending the time to learn the game's systems completely fucking useless. The campaign can be beaten on auto-battle, PvP is always auto-battle, there's no reason to turn on your brain at all, and this, to me, makes the game pay to win, as now it comes down to whose character has the better stats. I just don't get the PvP, it's literally just watching your guys fight, and whoever spent more money or gotten luckier wins. I mean, you make the team comp and choose their role and positioning, but that's it. You don't have any direct control, and it's all up to the AI, which more often than not makes stupid decisions. You could argue that it's like this since it's a mobile game, but then why have all those complex systems in the PvE? I mean, if this is your cup of tea, then go for it, but I just don't get it. The only way I could see combat being fun is if you force yourself to actually play during the campaign instead of just having auto battle on, but that's not how humans work. If there's an easier or more time effective manner, people are always going to use it. That's a simple fact of human psychology that old game designers need to understand. There's no reason to spend the time actively thinking about combat when you can just auto battle and win the fight faster. The only thing that motivates the player to engage with the combat are the optional objectives, and if you want to complete those, then you're probably going to need to take over for the AI, although not always. But even then, the combat itself isn't much of a challenge, it's just instead focusing on completing the optional objective since the oh AI God, is I focused on just killing the suicide. enemies. Unless you force yourself or are trying to 100% complete the game, then there's really no reason to turn off the auto battle. Alright, that's enough said about the gameplay, back to the story. We're informed that the super moves you can activate in combat are incredibly draining and damaging on those who activate them, but this is never demonstrated in the gameplay. I keep making them go Super Saiyan, but they aren't fucking dead yet, god why, I just want it to end. This is actually a consistent problem, there's a huge disconnect between what's happening in the combat and what's happening in the story. For example, at one point the gang is trapped by a bunch of mutant dogs or whatever and are hiding, scared for their lives, acting all weak and powerless, yet in the combat I absolutely dominate these dogs. Like, it's not even close, I am destroying them, and then right after the fight they're all like, ah, we can't keep this up, ah, they're way stronger than us, like what? Did this game even have game designers? Was it even playtested? Did nobody notice this glaringly obvious problem? No, they probably did, just nobody cares. Oh crap, the game is self-aware. So anyways, after the waifu's bullshit that they're tired after using their ultimate blast, whatever the fuck, the AI calls you a gentleman, with which you agree, and then you have to carry Red Boob because her legs are tired and you're a gentleman. Don't worry, Chokes, yeah, you could go take a little nappy nap. The evil alien robot people that were fighting will just come back tomorrow. Like, they understand that you need to, to have your beauty rest. After Red Boob tries real hard to appeal to the Coomer fan base, you regroup back at base where you take part in a very confusing conversation with Catgirl. You accuse her of slacking off, to which she responds by accusing you of flirting with her. Now, I'll admit, I'm not flirted with a lot of girls, but I don't think randomly walking up to one and accusing them of slacking off is flirting. You're just a dick. Then your character says this, and I really, really just want to crawl into a hole and die. After this absolute train wreck of a conversation, Catgirl teaches you how to gamble and you go to your next training mission and yeah, let me just skip. Actually, no. No, fuck this, I'm done. This story is so fucking boring, I can't do this anymore. I quit, I quit, I'm not writing any more script. It was kind of fun while I was playing, but actually trying to analyze or summarize this thing is a literal health hazard. Future Toasty, just make like a funny moments montage or something. I'm gonna go eat meatloaf.
Is this bestiality? Is being into cat girls bestiality? That's what I really want to know. That's a real subtle sexual innuendo, Yui. Well, hey, I'll take you out back. Uh, slap some pussy around. I'm not talking about the vagina. I'm talking about the fact that you're a cat. I'm going to beat the shit out of you for suggesting sexual intercourse in a professional workplace. I you I already had you. No, I haven't. I already I literally had her in the last fight. From now on, no matter what happens, you can gamble. <laughs> Thanks, Yui. <laughs> you equipped it. How would you equip it if you don't know what it is? Who is she? Do I have dementia? Do I have dementia? She- I have been commanding her for every battle so far. I know both of you! I think I might have hit my head, honestly. I think I- if I don't remember you, you guys, then I probably am not going to remember my assessment. Um, there is nobody here, actually. Not a single person is here. Um, can I get the meat with you? Or maybe I provide the meat. Nope. I have no clue. All I do is sit here and watch them fight. I, I don't have any battle duties at all. I literally contribute nothing. I just click auto and then they do it. I, I don't do anything. What do you mean? I, whatever. I see where she got her outfit uh, or yeah. What the fuck? Ooh, I got my lolly girl. Ooh. What? These aren't hyenas. What the fuck is that? Right, whatever, I don't even need to play anyway. This doesn't matter. Dude, there's so many fucking currencies in this game. This is crazy. These waifus are so generic. I just, my brain just switches off when I'm reading their dialogue. I just can't. I've been duped. Those boobs are fake. It was a man all along. Look, garrison soldier A. You're not even important enough to have a name. Old people on my team have names. You're just garrison soldier A. So how about you, you fuck off, uh, you don't talk down to me. <laughs> what matters is we clutched it. We clutched up. <laughs> They're just constant talking. Shut the fuck up. Just walk by, see a couple dudes dead on the ground. Ew. Dorm. Let's go visit the child. Withholding information from me could literally lead to our eventual deaths. Why are you blushing and getting emotional in the middle of fucking life or death combat? What the hell is wrong with you? What? We didn't kill them? What? You shot him through that with a bow! What? All I ever wish for that girl is a peaceful life? Well, unfortunately, that's impossible because we are in the middle of a fucking all-out war in a cyberpunk future. What? Ah, oh, survey. Yeah. In the past six months, what's the highest cumulative amount of time you spent on a game? Is my time measured in money? At this point, I'm just trying to create my account where it's good enough that I could sell it if this game ever gets popular. That's all I'm going for right now. I thought we were sensates. It says you're a sensate in the fucking thing. What? <laughs> okay, so, um... What the fuck was that? These remnants don't even seem that bad. I mean, we're invading their area and murdering them. Like, this is it really seems like we're the bad guys here. Keenan, you are a level 2 stalker mercenary who shouldn't care about other people and just want to get paid. Why would you sacrifice yourself for us? That doesn't make any sense. We're not going to pay you any better for it. Are you shitting me? We're no match for him. We decimated everything. We barely took any damage. We're no match for him, my fucking ass. She asked you a question. Yes, she's questioning someone, you. What? Am I like five? All right, so there you have it. The story is near incomprehensible garbage that is so disconnected from the gameplay that its only worth lies in the moments where it appeals to the coomers. It's not good enough to motivate you for the gameplay and the PvP is so boring that you get none of the dopamine you normally would out of winning. Even if you like the PvP, the fact that it's all auto battle means that almost no skill is required, which, while I don't know for sure, makes it seem to me that the game is completely pay to win. There's some real weird ass shit in this game too, like how you can increase intimacy levels with your characters by gifting them things which unlocks more skills? I don't know. I don't- I, I just- I gave up on this game at this point. I just- I can't- I can't do this anymore. The broken English has melted my brain and the boring gameplay has driven me into a near catatonic state. I really didn't think mobile gaming was this bad, but I severely underestimated them. Like, if this is the kind of gameplay and story people are okay with, which I didn't really see too many complaints about those aspects of the game, it was mainly just the drama surrounding it and the gambling rates. 
then I don't even know what to say. I guess I see why so many developers make mobile games. If you can churn out garbage like this and find a dedicated audience that will defend your actions and call your garbage-ass product good, then what's the fucking point in the rest of us making good games? When doing the research for this video, I found images of a figurine made of the game's titular lowly deer character. I don't know, man. Why is a shitty mobile game getting figures made? Who is buying this? Where the hell did we go wrong?